So we have the following results. Uh, in the book, I get more, right? So we have uh, the int, uh, 1 over 1 minus x is going to be this. Okay, and uh, here x is less than equal to 1. Okay. We also have an e to the x. Uh, x then and bacteria. This is a, x is for any x, so no restriction. And I also have a, this one. I think that is going to be a negative sign. A integral here is n x to the n. Okay. So when you differentiate, you do get actually this two are related. Okay. When you differentiate both sides or integrate, differentiate the natural log, you get the first one. Okay, if you integrate the first one, you get uh, you get the third one. Okay, you can also uh, you can also use them. Uh, you can also get to the power series representation for other well-known functions such as uh, sine and the cosine, and they are given in the book. Okay, and the formula is a little bit uh, complicated. Okay, so you can find out from the textbook. Uh, uh, those are the very uh, special. Okay, actually, essentially, so far we only have a two. The third one is related to the first one. Okay, now. What is so called Taylor series? Given the function, okay, given a function, sort of defined nearby a number A, given a function defined nearby A, right? The Taylor series, the Taylor series is defined by this formula. Okay, this is the only candidate for the power series representation of the function f of x, okay, at a, okay. This is the only candidate for the power series representation For the function f of x at a. Okay, so if you are looking for a positive representation for the for the function around some point, then if they exist, must be this one. Okay, so when each trying to find power series, a terra series, terra series is given by this formula. But if I ask you to find terra series, there's other way to to get, okay? That's the first point, okay? The second point is, uh, now how to prove this past Terra series is indeed the past series representation, then, uh, then uh, you have to use the Taylor's theorem to prove that, okay? So if, uh, yeah, so Taylor theorem says that if the absolute value, uh, yeah, if the following, is that's the first point. The second point is whether this is going to be indeed a Terra series, okay? And then you have to do some work, okay? So if uh, if uh, f of x to the n plus one, this is less than or equal to n for x minus a less than or equal to d, and uh, okay, and uh, And the, the error, you see the error between the function and the power series, right? This error, tells us says less than equal to m, uh, this yet yeah, depends on n, right? n plus one factorial x minus a times d. If this goes to zero for x minus a less than equal to d, then we have 
this identity. Okay. And this is a true for for x uh, for x minus less than equal to d. Okay, so indeed uh, this is a power series of right? because they're equal, right? Converging. Now what is I n? I n is just as an error, right? I n where I n is is just the difference of this uh, this partial sum. Okay, so I n is just different because if the difference approaches zero, then the series approaches function. Okay, this is a, the second part is used to, to, to get power series for, for, the, uh, for some well known function, just like sine x, cosine x, exponential function. Okay, another point I want to make is if you already have power series representation, then the terror series is just itself, okay? And uh, this is what I want to say. That if f of x is already given by this formula, okay? And for x less than r, here's i is greater than zero, then, then this is the terror series of the function. Okay, at A, okay. And in other words, in other words, in other words, the CN is nothing but, but this cost given by this. Okay, so if I ask you to find a terror series, how do you do that? Okay, for some, very, for some elemental function, if I ask you to find a terror series for that function, you can either use the definition, right, on the top, right? This is terrorism on the very top, okay, given by that. Or you use the existing result, known as new, uh, yeah, the known result to get the terror power series representation for the function, and that is terror series, okay? So there are a couple ways to, to do that, okay? For example, Okay, and this will be on the exams, okay? For example, I mean, this type of problems. So given a function here, okay? I, I want to find, yeah, find the terror series uh, of the function f at a equals any number one, for example, right? Actually, this I'm asking less than what I want. You know, I can ask you to find the power series representation for this function at a equals one. That's much, much. Uh, uh, I ask more than the terror series. But surprised if you, if you, yeah, you can. Uh, if you find the terror series a power series representation, then you automatically get terror series. But if you find the terror series, okay, by definition, you have to prove it's convergent in order to say this is a power series representation, okay? So how they do, the best way to do is we're using, uh, we use the fact that e to the x equals uh, x to the n, n factorial, okay? Using this fact, this is this holds for, for any x, no restriction x. Okay, what I'm going to do is because I want to use the a minus a equals one. So I let a u to be x minus one. Okay, then this function is going to be negative x, x is u plus one. It's going to be negative two u times e to the negative two. All right? All right, so now, This function can be expanded in the form negative two u to the power n. Okay, okay, and this holds for any of that, but there's no restriction on u actually, right? This is incorrect. So now that 
let's get let's get the series in terms of u to the power n. Okay, so we're almost done. We put all the constant together. Okay, and the u is going to be repressed by x minus one. Okay, and then any any restriction on x? No. So no restriction, but it, it can write in this form. So this is the power series representation for the function at one. But this must be the Terra series. Okay, you can get this is the Terra series. Okay. At a equals one. Okay, we actually we we find the more than we need. Okay. Now let me put a note here. Macrolin did a little bit earlier than uh, Terra. Okay. So the special Terra series is at A equals zero is also called Macrolin series. Okay, don't be confused about that. So Macrolin series is just a special Terra series. That's why uh, I did not mention here you can look at the book okay when you ask it to find macaroni series just the tail series when a equals zero so in old days maybe macaroni did it much earlier like 20 20 years older than hell but uh, by that time the communication is not great you know uh all the yeah people do not easily get uh know each other so even someone published the paper in a local journal Nobody else probably can see it after 20 years. Okay, so that's the possibility. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. So given the function, okay, x to the six, Minus x to uh, that's too large. Okay, let's q. Yeah, plus one. Okay. This is a polynomial. Okay, question one. Find uh, the power series representation for the function fx at a equals zero. Okay. And also at, yeah, the second question is blah, 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 and at a equals one, for example. Okay, just slightly different. So uh, power series representation is at a equals zero. That would be the, uh, yeah, how do you do that? Right. The answer to the first one is trivial because there's no need that you can do that. Okay, so f of x equals one plus zero times x minus zero is equal to get zero, right? And plus negative uh, plus zero times x minus one. Uh, no, it's not zero, negative one, right? So those are the coefficients. Uh, negative one uh, square and the plus positive one x and not x minus zero q and the, all of them are zero the rest of them if you really want to express in this form it's a cn x minus zero to the power n and uh, you can determine the coefficient cn Right, C1, C0 is a one, C1 is zero, C2 is negative one, C3 is one, C, C, all of the other constant are going to be zero. Okay, so this is a power series representation. You just need to express it in that form. And uh, polynomials are, are, the, are the special, uh, power series, okay. 
<coughs> so this is a power series. Yeah, that's for the first one. The second one is a little bit uh, uh, difficult. Okay. I, I don't need to find the derivatives. That polynomials are so special. I need to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to express okay, this function in the form cnx minus 1 to the power n, right? I just needed to figure out the coefficients. There are a couple of ways to do, right? One is to, to find a Terra series, then you have to prove that Terra series converging to that function, okay? But it's polynomial. So the easiest way to do is just rewrite this polynomial in a different way. You let u to be x minus 1. Then x is going to be u plus 1, right? <coughs> so f of x equals u plus 1 cubed minus u plus 1 squared plus 1. Then you expand it, and you get a polynomial being u. Then you get power series, right? At 1. So let's expand it. So there's a couple ways to do it. Now, there's a simple way to do it. Uh, you can multiply this out one by one. Yeah, it's get u cubed plus 3u squared plus 3u plus 1 minus u squared plus 2u plus 1 and plus 1. All right, so you get u cubed. 3u squared minus u squared is getting 2u squared. 3u minus 2u is u. 1 minus 1 plus 1 is 1. Okay. So, and then you write like this in this order because this is a power series representation of this polynomial in term uh, at one okay so you can if you want to express in this form you have to tell me what is the coefficient okay you have to say well c0 is a one C1 is 1, C2 is 2, C3 is 1, Cn is 0 for n greater than equal to 4. Okay. So this is power series. Okay. So polynomial is very simple to find their power series representation. Okay. You don't need to uh, differentiate, even ask you to find Terra series representation for a Terra series for this for this uh, polynomial. What you should do, I think, is you should find power series representation. If you find the power series representation, you already find out what to more than what you needed to find. Okay. Right. So that saves you uh, saves you a lot of time. Okay. Now uh, we you you do need it to know that. The general formula x minus a to the power n okay, or plus a x plus y for example. Okay. X plus y. Uh, the general formula is like that. It's going to be n1, x to the n minus 1, y1, and 2, x to the n minus 2, y square, and 3. Okay. And the keep it going, the middle term, and k is n minus k, y, k. The last term, n, n minus 1, x, y, to n minus 1, and the y, n. Okay. Now, what is a, what is the coefficient? The coefficient here is just n factorial, k factorial, n minus k factorial. And this number is very interesting. Uh, this is a number tells you how many teams you are going to form if you select uh, k, no, k members from a group of n members, okay? So if I have 40 students here, I'm going to select five students to form a team. So my question is how many different type of teams you are going to get if the student change, right? You get different teams. And you, this is a formula you can get. That's lots of it. It's, it's particularly it's useful uh, when you design some 
like code, right? And uh, for example, if you buy a buy buy a lock, use a code, right? And when you design how many digits you can choose from zero to nine, okay? You have a, if you if you have a four uh, digits you can use in a row, okay? And uh, how many different locks you can design, you know, like something. Like that. Uh, how many different type of it's a lot, okay? So anyway, this is a number, but then how do you get a few of them? You know, sometimes you don't need to get general formula. So here's the first one: x plus one to the power one is just x plus one, x plus y square, and that will be x plus two xy plus y square, okay? So two coming from here. So x plus y cubed, and they get x cubed. And I believe that one plus one is a three, three x squared y. And then this is also three, three x y squared and the y cubed, okay? So this is how do we get the number? And the x plus y to the fourth power. So I can put, and then the one plus three is gonna be four. And then three plus three is gonna be six. And three plus one is four. Okay. And then y to the fourth power. So just keep it going. You can get all the coefficients. <laughs> okay. So it's easy to get x plus y to the fifth if you expand it, and that you can get all the coefficients. Okay. Uh, this is a pretty useful uh, formula. Uh, for example, if you are given x to the fourth plus 2x plus 1, right? Right, I wanted to find out, find the, uh, find the Terra series at a equals 2, for example, right? Mm -hmm. At a equals 2. So that means you have to expand it. You can ex you have to express it in the form like x minus two squared to q. So what they do is you let u to be x minus two, then x is going to be u plus two, right? So what you have to do is you will get u plus two to the fourth power plus two, right? Then you have to expand it, and you look at the formula above. So that's formula. Right, so you will get u to the fourth power plus four times u cubed and t plus six times u squared and then it will be two squared plus four times u and uh, uh, x, sorry, what? what I'm doing here, this is not a cube, it's just, this would be cube, yeah. So it would be two cube, okay, then plus Two to the fourth power. That's the first part. Then plus two u plus four plus one. Okay. Then you have to collect all the terms, right? So u to the fourth power, um, eight, eight u cube, and uh, then I think I have a twenty-four u square. Then I also have the two here and have a have those number, okay? All right, so four times eight, 32 plus two, 34 U, okay? Then plus uh, 16 plus four is 21. Okay, so this is a this is a Taylor series representation. So you can write like this: twenty one plus thirty four x minus two, twenty four x minus two square, eight x minus two q plus x minus two to the fourth power. Okay, and the rest of them are zero. So this is the Taylor series. All right.
Now I'm going to ask you to find the Terra series given f of x equals one of x. Okay. Find the Terra series at a equals a equals uh, negative three. Okay, please do this part. Okay. So, find the terraces. What it should be? Why can you find the terraces? Find the definition. But I always tell you, don't do that, right? If you're able to find a process representation for the function, then that is a terror series, okay? So in order to find the positive representation, what you can do is the standard method, that's u to be x minus a, so x minus negative three, which will be x plus three, okay? Then x is u minus three, so f of x is gonna be u minus, one over u minus three. What you have to do is you try to express it in the form like that, right? How to do that? We are going to using, we're going to, yeah, we're going to use this, this formula. Okay, I use the X or use W, it doesn't matter. I can put a W here, right? Okay, and the W should be less than equal to one. Okay, this holds. So I'm going to modify the function in the form. How can I do that? Okay, so, so this is a function. I take negative three out. Then I get one minus U over three. Okay, I have to take a negative one, so negative three out. Then that constant will become one. Okay. That's the only trick you have to practice. Now that depends on your algebra skill. 
if you're not good in your algebra, you are making mistakes, even like simple combinations, and you you don't get the right answer. Okay. So you take this constant out, then you get something like a one minus w, right? So now you are ready to use above formula. Here the w is going to be uh, a u over three. Okay. And this holds for a three value u over three less than one. Okay, because w is to be less than one. Then you rewrite this again. I have a negative sign. I have a three. I also have a three to the power n. So the n three to the power n minus one, n plus one. Okay. And the u to the n. Almost done, right? Then you just replace u by x plus 3. And here x plus 3 is less than 3. Uh, now I'm going to, yeah, this is a, this is a standard technique, right? To get power series representation, then you can get a Terra series for the fun. So this is a Terra series. You just, all you have to say is this is a Terra series. That, okay, you get all the coefficients. Now I'm going to look at the formula for sine x, okay? Sine x, can you explain? it in the form like that okay and what is this convergence radius of convergence yeah this is our question okay i'm trying to figure it out okay. find the power series representation for science how do i do that i don't have any other formula to use okay if you can use that, if you can use the Euler's formula, maybe you can solve the problem formally. There's a famous formula for the Euler. It says that e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. <laughs> okay, so what does that mean? That means, yeah, you know, you can I see that is compass now, but you can formally use the having expression for that something. Then you eventually uh, you will get the the power series for a uh, 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 power series represented for sine and cosine. This is the magic the formula. Euler is a. I think I even saw his picture on some money in Europe. Yeah, and uh, and. Uh, one of his famous formulas is that, you know, human being introduced the imaginary number, which is we call complex number, okay? I, I, this number is a square root of negative one, does not exist. But if you use that, and uh, that means uh, if you use that, you can get, you can solve lots of problems easily, okay? So I'm going to formally derive the formula before, you know, I can show you like that. Okay, so here's cosine theta plus i c sine theta, right? Is e to the i theta. So that means I probably can get something like n factorial i theta to the power n, right? <laughs> Do you agree, right? Because e to the x equals this, right? Yeah, and this should be hold continuous. Uh, it's going to be, this is a better to say that it's going to be less than one, less than any number. So this should be holding any number. So, but for the I, sometimes negative, sometimes positive. 
So let's look at the I. What is I? When I is even number, you get negative one to the M, okay? When I is uh, other number, okay? When I is other number, uh, you will get I to the two M times I negative one, okay? So this is just, uh, yeah, this is just uh, equal to uh, negative one M, and the I to the negative one is gonna be a negative I, okay? So that's complex. Now, I assume that you learned a little bit complex analysis, okay? So, so you will get ne negative one to the M plus one I. All right, why is that important? Because I want to express this in two different ways, okay? Uh, I want to express in two different ways. So when is those uh, n equals 2n, okay? Okay, 2n. And uh, when the m is even, okay? So it's going to be I see that 2, 2n. Actually, the m is going to be from, uh, from 0 to 1. From zero to infinity. Okay, and also uh, it's going to be I say that it's two m minus one, so m equals uh, I think it starts from one. Okay, then. Then I rewrite the first one. I is going to be negative m theta two m, right? Great, agreed, all right? Because I two to the power two m, and two m is negative one to m. And this one, I'm going to express I to the two m minus one is going to be negative one m plus one and the theta to the two m minus one and i okay so the power series on the right hand side is going to be uh, the real part and the imaginary part now i compare both sides because this is going to be called to cosine theta plus i sine theta Okay, so what I get, I get two formulas. Euler says that this is 100% correct. <laughs> you don't need to waste time to determine the coefficient. Okay, and another formula, you can do this simultaneously. Another formula, All right, because the complex part should be cross compass. The real part should be the match. You see, we got this form, but of course you have, to, okay, I don't like the compass numbers, then you have to do directions, find the, okay? Here actually, I got those from the, from the formula e to the x, I just assume x is complex number, and that should be, still true, then I compare both sides, I get two formulas for sine, cosine, okay? And uh, yeah, it's interesting, right? So sometimes, like a real number is one dimension, complex number is two dimension numbers. If you jump to the two dimension, higher dimensional space to look at lower dimensions problems, even this imaginary, out of your imagination, and you play the math over there, and you come back and you find that the problem is so easy to get it. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. That's why we have to study high dimensional space. And uh, everybody knows how to do this, but nobody's, almost nobody on this campus really knows his theory. Okay. Or read his paper. Maybe it's except for a couple of professors in the department of physics. Okay. That's a, 
<laughs> but he's so fabulous. Everybody, even kids, see them and princess to know that. Off with the instinct. Okay, but he has to. He has to. He has to go to high dimension space, four dimension space, to talk about our universe. Then we can understand our universe. It's called the space time, including the time. But it's hard to imagine sometimes. Okay, in a four dimension space. Wow. Okay. And here we see we just jump from one dimension and numbers, real numbers, a good compass number. We can quickly get that. Okay. So let's look at the look, let's look at science data. When n equals one, I can rewrite, you know, use a n star, m starts from zero, then I have to re-index it. Okay. So when m equals one, the first term is just the theta. Okay. The second term would be negative. When m equals two, three factorial, and this will be theta cubed. Okay, no square. Okay, when m equals three, three, so that be positive again, and this will be five factorial, and theta is to the fifth. So basically, you just pick up uh, those. Uh, other terms in the in the power system representation for the e to the theta compare with that right but you have to change the sign alternatively right so that's going to be one plus theta plus theta square or two factorial plus theta cube three factorial theta to the fourth power right so for the sign theta here it's only considered those terms, right? Let me use a color pencil, right? So those terms, right? That's for the sign thing. But you have to change the sign alternately. But for the for the uh, for the cosine theta, right? You have to consider those. This is a cosine theta gives. Okay, that gives is the cosine theta. Okay, let's write down the cosine set a few terms. The first term is a one. A second term should be minus. The third term should be positive. You see? Then it's easy to understand, right? Uh, it's interesting, right? So they are related, even related to the set of the way you know, we didn't even know that, right? But now, even you find a terror series for sine theta cosine theta uh, uh, using the definition, and then you should get the same answer. But but then you probably also realize, hmm, this looks like sine theta cosine theta relates to the theta, and that's true. That relates to right? Look at this. Cosine theta just becomes those terms. And of course, it's a change of sign. Okay. Uh, and you can also use this terror series to, uh, this uh, power series for cosine theta to solve, uh, to find the limit. So this really means. Okay, let's modify that. One minus cosine theta divided by theta square. What you can get? Okay, one minus cosine theta divided by theta square is going to be one minus cosine theta. You can actually um, okay, divided by theta square. So, so, so then you can one half minus say the square over four factorial, blah, blah, blah. So this converging to one half, a uh, theta approaches here, see? So you can, then you can claim that limit of theta approaches here, one minus cosine theta over theta square is gonna be one half. But you can also prove that directly. Yeah, how do you prove that this is a one minus cosine theta over theta square is one half? You have to use a, a double angle formula. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
you can use a double angle formula. Okay. All right, so this is for the uh, sine theta, cosine theta formula. I use a complex, it's, the book is denomination complex analysis, okay? But I use a complex variable to introduce this form, formula. I'll show you how to get that, okay? So now I'm going to look at the function called one plus x to the power k. K is not necessary to be integer, okay? K is any real number, okay? Find the, find the, uh, the power series representation, okay? At, for this function f of x at a equals zero. So the function is defined and the differentiable at a equals zero, many, as many times as well. Uh, step one, you have to find the Terra series because I don't have a formula. I cannot modify any formula, okay? Step one, find the, the Terra series. And the step two shows that the Terra series Okay. Convergent to the function. Okay. So you have to show two steps. Otherwise, how do you know this is a power series representation? Okay. How do you do that? Just differentiate the function. The first derivative, you get this. Second derivative, you get this. So gradually, you will uh, you will get uh, some number. Okay. Now there's a possibility. K is a positive. K is a positive integer. Then you will stop somewhere because after that the derivative will be zero. Okay, so we may assume k is not a positive integer. Otherwise, k minus two may be zero, k minus three may be zero. So we assume that for the, otherwise it's simple, otherwise it's a polynomial, right? So we, that's a trivial case. So we assume that k is not a positive integer. Then you can continue to differentiate, otherwise, you will stop somewhere, okay? A certain step. If a k is a, is a positive integer, then at the k step, it can be zero, okay? So, so if f of n, x is k, k minus one, k minus two, and keep it going, k minus, I think it'll be n minus one here and the one plus x to the k minus n. All right, so that is a general formula. All right, that is general formula. Okay. So the coefficient, if you plug zero for x, you get k, k minus one, k minus two, k minus n minus one, okay? So you get this. All right, uh, so, the, so the terrace, so if it's divided by n, right? Divided by n factorial, then you get n factorial. I'm going to denote this by 
N K. How about like this? Or K N. Well, in the book they use the K N. K on the top, N at the bottom. It's okay. All right. Then this number, you know, right? Then, uh, then the terra series is going to be uh, N factorial. Okay, so this is going to be just Kn, x to the n. So where, what is Kn, right? Times Kn is given by, by the formula. So you get this Terra series. All right. The question is, is it convergent to To the function one plus x to k. The answer is yes. Okay, the proof is a little bit difficult. Okay, you have to yeah the proof is a little bit difficult. So the idea is uh, <clears throat> so you have to show that uh, this is a convergent to, this is where convergent to the function uh, one plus x to the power k f of x for x less than one. Okay. So why? Okay. When then, yeah. Is actually, is it not, because I already use the infinity, so I should have said this is going to be even, this is a equal to the function. Okay. Why k, I'm assuming k is less than one because when k equals negative one, the problem is that something is not fine. Uh, so the idea is just to try to show that fix, uh, fix an arbitrary d less than one. Okay. Then, then uh, for, for x, uh, less than or equal to d. I want to make sure this is a convergence, so I have to look at n plus one x. Okay, and this is uh, is going to be is going to be this function, right? So it's going to be k k minus one all the way k minus n, and then the one plus x. To the to the k minus n plus one. Okay, so is this you have to estimate, and uh, when k sufficient large, when n sufficient large, this will be negative. Okay, this will be negative. This will be negative. So for the negative number, I think this is a absolute value is less than equal to sorry. We should put all the, yeah, so this is going to be k, k minus 1, as well k minus n, and this will be 1 minus d. Okay, yeah, there's a problem. It's independent x. Okay, so this is, a, this is what you can get. And uh, then uh, the, uh, the, the error, right, the difference between these two functions can be estimated by this upper bound. And divide by n factorial, n plus one factorial, and here's x minus x, yeah, but suit of x, yes, less than n plus one. So the question is, all I have to do is make sure this converging to zero. And you, you have to prove that. Otherwise, uh, otherwise this is a, it's a problem here, okay? As n approaches infinity.
But, and this is a true. Okay. It's not an easy to prove, but uh, that can show that. Okay. So this is the idea. Uh, then you then you get this uh, identity. Okay. Uh, I think uh, uh, from this estimate, if this then less than one half, it's easy to check. If this is a little bit large, it's, uh, it's you have to modify the argument. But anyway, I'm going to I'm going not going to give the argument more more detailed argument here. So let's look at the function uh, square one plus x. Okay. Right. So this function is differentiable when x equals zero. So according to the above formula, right, this can be expanded, and this is going to be, k is going to be one half. So it's one half of n, x to the n. And this is a true for x less than one. Okay. If you really want to write down the details of the coefficient, this will be like that. One and two times two minus one, and one, and one half here, yeah, one half minus n minus one, n factorial x to the n. Okay. Then you can list like a few terms at the very beginning. This, All right, very last, I'm going to talk about this problem. Uh, find, the, find the power series representation for the function f of x equals uh, sine square x. Whoa, All right, sine square. Okay. Well, then you say, oh, I have to have the differential, right? Because it's impossible to find the formula. Differential. Differential the function. Then uh, how can I use a known result? I think you can. You have to modify, change the sine square x to what? To 1 minus cosine 2x divided by 2. Do you agree with that? Right? Yeah, then no square there, just cosine 2x. Okay. This is uh, going to be 1 minus, yeah, that's correct. So the coefficient, the first term, all I have to do is find the uh, terra series, uh, find the power series representation for the cosine 2x. Okay, but what is cosine 2x? Let's go back what we find out, right? Cosine is theta. Cosine theta is here. Cosine theta is this one. Okay, let's memorize that. Okay, I'm going to copy it. Okay, copy it past to the right. All right, so we got this. So we recall cosine theta. All right. And this holds for any theta, right? And the first term is what? When theta, when theta uh, is going to be zero, that's all right, yeah. Okay, using that, I continue to express it. Two x to two m, that's it. So you get terrace, right? You get a positive representation. If you have to modify the co uh, coefficient, negative m, 2m, 
n factorial and 2 to the 2m and x to the 2m. Yeah, be careful about the first term. Sometimes, when, right? The first term you can maybe, when m equals, when m equals uh, uh, zero, I think when m equals zero, I got zero. Okay, so the first term is gone. Only the and then that's also true because sine x when x equals zero to zero, so that's no first term. There's a the, yeah, the begin with the with x squared. So now you can combine them and stuff from right, 2m and negative one. You have one m, so m plus one or m minus one. Then you have a constant two to the two m minus one because that's a two here and the x to the two m. So this is the series. This is the power series. We use uh, the existence. We use a known formula. So now you can do that. If I give you cosine square x, you can you can do that. All right. Or even I give you uh, give you a formula cosine x times sine x, right? And how do you find the, the power series representation? So look at this function. The first term is x squared, not an x. Okay, look at the first term when m equals one. M equals one, the two factorial. Okay, m equals one. One. So two times one. So that's just still one. So actually is going to be two divided by two is so one, just x squared. Okay, that's the first term. The second term may be, may be negative, right? Maybe negative. And when m equals two, so it's four factoria, negative cube and two cube, right? Two times two is four, four, right? So four factoria is gonna be one times two times three times four, right? And uh, I think it's just one third because eight, yeah. So it's going to be one third. If you want to write down the second, right? So one third x to the fourth power. Okay, that's interesting, right? But this is going to be sine square x. So sine square x will be less than x squared. You know, if you want to really want approximate sine squares, you can use this two terms, okay? But the sine x, okay, remember, sine x, sine x uh, is going to be x minus theta cube, okay? Sine x is going to be x minus three factorial x cubed, right? I can probably also get the above few terms if I look at sine, right? Sine square x is going to be x minus three factorial x cubed plus high order, okay, high order. So I can, I think I can quickly get just two terms, right? X square, right? Minus two times X times X cubed of three factorial, blah, 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 right? And plus the high order terms. So if you only consider a few terms, then you get X square, two over three factorial is one third, then X to the fourth power and high order. So you see that, right? You can also get the three terms using the Pell expansion for the sinus. 
and you can sign square x. And, and yes, you can see that that match, right? Yeah, you can also get few terms for the, for the, for the sine square x using the tele expansion for sine x. Uh, all right, so the, uh, the, let me summarize. The key point is only the few cases you have to derive, uh, you have to find the, the general formula for the derivatives, then you find out the terra series definition. But in most of cases, you are given a problem, you can use the known result to modify that power series representation to get to the one you want, okay? So that would be stupid if you if you have this differential function and try to figure out the general formula to the to the ends or the, the derivative of the function and to get terra series. Okay. So there are some problems on the test. I just ask you to find terra series, but don't differentiate if possible. <laughs> because some of you are not capable even get to the general formula. Uh, based on the derivatives, you know, if you make a mistake on second step, and you you cannot find the pattern for the derivatives, high order derivatives of functions. Okay. So the most uh, uh, important thing is, yeah, if you're not very good about that part, then just do more exercise.